Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a comparison between the Ford Explorer, the Dodge Durango, the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, and the Chevy Traverse to find out which three row American SUV is the best. Before we get into this video though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larch Miller Chevy here in Provo, the Ford here in Provo, and the Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Provo for giving me some time with all four of these SUVs. All four of these happen to be available for sale for the time being, so if you're interested, I'll include a link to all of their inventories in the description down below. Definitely check them out. And if you happen to live in Utah and, well, you want to be able to see all of the American SUVs back to back, well, come and visit the dealerships here in Provo. And then as always, on a side note, if you wanna save time and money, the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Now the Explorer has three different powertrains. You've got the two, three, four cylinder, which this Explorer has. It's paired to a 10 speed automatic transmission. It puts out 300 horsepower and then 310 pound feet of torque. You also have the 30 V6, which puts out 400 horsepower and then 415 pound feet of torque. There is also a hybrid V6 you can get with the Explorer as well, but it's not very common. Now average fuel economy with the Explorer is gonna be somewhere in the mid twenties roughly. Now with the Durango, we've got like four different powertrains. The two main ones, 3.6 liter V6 and the 5.7 Hemi, both go through an eight speed automatic transmission. The V6 produces just under 300 horsepower and just over 260 pound feet of torque. Whereas the 5.7 Hemi, which this one has, produces about 360 horsepower and 390 pound feet of torque. Average fuel economy with the Durango is gonna be closer to like the low 20s, especially if you get the <laughs> Hemi V8. Now there is also a 6.4 Hemi V8 you can get in a supercharged 6.2 liter Hemi V8, um, but those are the performance variants of the Durango. Now with the Jeep Grand Cherokee, we've got three different powertrain options available. We've got the 3.6 liter V6, which this one has. So again, about 290 horsepower, about 260 pound feet of torque, goes through an eight-speed automatic transmission. You'll be able to average like low 20s in terms of the fuel economy. We also have a 5.7 Hemi V8, which is identical to the Durango's. And then we also have a four by E powertrain, which is a turbocharged two liter four cylinder paired to a hybrid system. That puts out 375 horsepower and then 470 pound feet of torque. It's a plug-in hybrid that gives you over 20 miles of electric driving range. And so with that, you technically can get infinite fuel economy if you never use the gas engine, um, but actual fuel economy is going to be like mid-20s. Well, the Traverse makes things simple because there's one powertrain. This 3.6 liter V6, which goes through a 9-speed automatic transmission, puts out 310 horsepower and then 266 pound-feet of torque. Fuel economy is going to be in the low 20s in terms of the average. So we've got a ton of different powertrain options available between all of these vehicles, but the thing that I noticed is if you get these vehicles with a similar powertrain, then not only are the power figures going to be very similar, but the fuel economy ratings are all about the same, like low 20s is for the average, which uh, makes sense because they all compete against each other. Now, before we move on to the next part, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the Explorer, this one has the ST line package, so everything's been blacked out on the front end. But the big design cues with the front end of the Explorer is first off with the hood, notice it's raised there on either side. And notice with the lights too, they're pretty sharp with how they kind of wrap around. And so it has this like boxy in your face design. Now popping over to the Durango, venting I feel like is the design with the Durango. You've got the venting on the hood, you've got the venting with the front fascia, really like boxy aggressive looking headlights. And so it's kind of like an in your face performance look. Whereas with the Jeep, it's definitely going more towards the luxury side of things. Again, it still has like a boxy type design like the other two, but it's a little bit softer, not nearly as aggressive. Um, and something to mention is all of these have daytime running lights, but they don't all have LED headlights. Anyways, last one is the Traverse, which I feel like is the most crossover E out of the bunch in terms of the style, because again, those three are very boxy with the look, whereas this one is definitely more rounded off and more curved. So if you like that more rounded off appearance, then well, you're gonna love the Traverse. Now with the Explorer, our tire and wheel setup is 255, 55, 20 in the front and in the rear. With the Durango, our tire and wheel setup is 265, 50, 20 in the front and in the rear. The Grand Cherokee also has a tire and wheel setup of 265, 50, 20 in the front and in the rear. And then finally, the Traverse has a tire and wheel setup of 255, 55, 20 in the front 
and in the rear. Now we'll start our side view with the Traverse. You guys can see this one has the High Country package, judging by the massive badge. Lots of chrome trim. I like how the fender flares are body painted. That definitely looks very premium. And the thing's interesting is the front end, you guys can see, is kind of like more crossover -y with the smooth design, but then the back end is more boxy, so it's kind of like a mix between the two. Now, obviously, since the Grand Cherokee and the Durango are smushed in between the Explorer and the Traverse, we're not going to be able to get the best side view with them. But notice with the Grand Cherokee, you got body painted fender flares, and it basically is just like the normal Grand Cherokee design, but in L format, which makes it a little bit longer. I do like that distinctive cut there on the side. And then with the Durango, we also have body painted fender flares as well. Um, but notice that it's not as, it's like more rounded off with the side uh, compared to the Grand Cherokee, which is interesting. Finally, finishing things off with the Explorer. Notice like the distinctive lines here on the side. Those are pretty aggressive looking. And again, it's kind of like boxy on the back end, like boxier compared to the front, at least. No body painted fender flares in this one though. Now, when it comes to key fobs, you guys can see that we have the exact same functionality on all of the fobs. They all have remote start and they all have an opening for the rear hatch. Starting in the rear of the Traverse, you guys can see that we don't have like a massive amount of space behind the third row, but it's a decent amount. And then we actually have these controls right here. It'll automatically raise or lower the third row. And with the third row folded down, it is quite spacious. Now popping over to the Grand Cherokee L, you guys can see similar situation. Although I feel like the Traverse looked like it was a little bit more spacious behind the third row, but it's very close. Now notice with the Grand Cherokee, Similar situation, um, but notice we can also fold, you probably saw the controls right next to it, we can also fold down the second row as well. Yeah, this is a lot slower. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. But once it's all folded down, again, super spacious. Now with the Durango, I will say this looks even smaller than the Grand Cherokees. Um, this one, we actually have to like push it down ourselves with these little latches right here uh, to get the third row down. And then finally with the Explorer, um, similar situation where we've got like these like whole straps, but this one has the top ones, which, geez, those make the seats like fly down. Um, but behind the third row, again, it's kind of a similar story. Well, actually, no, we'll keep that there. Kind of similar story to the Durango. Now this isn't very scientific, but I'm gonna lay back here to see which one feels the most spacious. So here's the uh, Traverse and here's kind of where my legs hang out. And then here's the uh, Grand Cherokee and well, it feels about the same. And then we're in the uh, Durango back here, I guess. And uh, guess what? It feels about the same. And then finally, spoiler alert, we got the Explorer and well, yeah, it's about the same. And then finishing things up with the rear design of all of the crossovers. It's actually more similar than I thought. They kind of all have this just like end point. Now, some of them are a little bit more rounder than others. I'd say that this one's probably the most boxy looking out of the bunch next to the Explore and I think a big part of it is the taillights and just how this kind of like comes off and then look at the exhaust tip covers And then with the Jeep Grand Cherokee a little bit more rounded off with the back end definitely love the uh, taillights So I think those look pretty cool Durango obviously has the light bar and again back ends definitely more on the rounded off side of things I love how they all have like <laughs> dual exhaust tips at the back end too and the Explorer is very very boxy now we're in the second row of the Traverse to quickly take a look at things. We've got a storage pocket back here. We've got heated seats. We've got our own climate zone with some outlet action. And then the door panel itself is actually really nice. We've got like these suede inserts here. And then headroom back here is also pretty solid. And it looks like we have like our own sunroof here at the top, which is pretty interesting. And then as for the third row in the Traverse, I pretty much fit back here. Um, you guys can see we've got some cup holder action, a USB back here, and um, headroom back here is also good. And I wanna mention that there are vents all along the top here in the Traverse. Now with the Grand Cherk, we also have solid leg room back here. You guys can see a little storage pocket. And then we got our own climate zone, heated seats, we've got some vents, tons of charging ports down there. And then really nice looking door panel here with this. And then headroom's also great. We don't have our own sunroof back here, but this has a panoramic, so kind of counts. Now in the third row of the Grand Cherokee, and it was definitely a little bit more difficult getting back here because this one has the bench seat there. And the center, like the Chevy, I could just slip through the captain chairs, but this I had to move the seat. Um, anyways, we've got like a cup holder here. <laughs> we've got some USB action. Um, and then headroom is also pretty good back here. Now here's our legroom in the Durango. You guys can see the little storage pocket. We've got some vent action here with some heated seats. USBs as well. And then we do have our own climate zone, but the controls are here at the 
top of the Durango. Um, and just like the other two, we got vents all along the ceiling. It's gonna be hard to see because of the camera view. And then look at this, forged carbon here with the orange stitching, pretty cool. And that headroom back here is also good. Legroom back here is solid, and well, captain chairs made things easy getting back here. We got a cup holder back here, um, and then headroom's pretty good. Now in the back of the Explorer, you guys can see the little storage pocket. Now something to note, this one is the least optioned out of the bunch. Um, so we don't have a climate zone back here, but you can get it with the Explorer. And then you guys can see like the red stitching and everything on the door panel. And then head in back here solid. Now just like the Grand Cherokee, since this one has the bench seat configuration, I had to move this out of the way to get back here. Um, here's legroom. And then here's a quick look at the uh, headroom. And then, oh yeah, we got some stuff happening down here with a cup holder. Now I quickly want to rate the passenger area with all of the vehicles. Now something to note, this is only going to take into account space and overall usability because these packages are not perfectly comparable to each other. I mean, the ST Line Explorer is like a $50,000 vehicle, whereas that Grand Cherokee L is like a 60 something thousand dollar vehicle because it's an Overland. Anyways, first and second place are going to be the Traverse and the Grand Cherokee L. Now when I say first and second place, they're super, super close. So I'm not gonna tell you which one's first and which one's second because I can't pick one. But those ones have the most usable third rows slash the interiors, I don't know, just it, that, those are the best. Now with the Durango and the Explorer, it's actually really close, but I will say the Explorer slightly loses out because the third row in the Explorer is actually the most uncomfortable out of all four of these vehicles. Now at the front of the Traverse, you guys can see we've got these really nice leather seats perforated here. And then here is the steering wheel, which also looks pretty rock solid. Quick look at the gauge cluster here. Notice it's half analog, half digital for the cluster. And this also comes with stuff like memory seat functionality. You got like blind spot monitoring with the mirrors. We've got adaptive cruise control. And then let's take a quick look at the camera system. So we do have a full 360 system here. Yeah, you can see out of like every single angle with it, so that's solid. Now as for the infotainment system itself, um, response time with the screen is great. And then this has the cool hidden compartment feature, <laughs> which is always a fun feature. You have to really press the button. Um, then you guys can see our climate controls. We've got heated seats, heated steering wheel, um, cooled seats as well. And then we've got a wireless phone charging pad down below. Shifter for that nine speed automatic. Now notice this one's in two wheel drive right now. We can put it in four wheel drive or all wheel drive rather. And we've got like a trailer tow mode on top of that. And then pretty spacious center console. And then notice like that suede trim right there. And then yeah, pretty normal glove box. And you guys saw earlier, we've got the uh, sunroof here at the front. So we got like double sunroof. And then this one, I believe, yeah, it does have the camera mirror. Now the Grand Cherokee has these really nice perforated leather seats. And then look at the steering wheel. Got some nice paddle shifters in the back. This has like adaptive cruise control. We got blind spot monitoring. We got stuff like memory seats. Notice all the windows are automatic. Full digital gauge cluster here with the Grand Cherokee. And then let's see what the camera system's like. Just a backup camera, so no 360 in this particular one. Um, heated cold seats, dual zone climate with that responsive infotainment system overall. I like how it's integrated here into the dash. And this one actually has like a passenger screen over there as well. And then look at like the leather trim here on the dash. And then you got like a bunch of physical buttons down below. This is like our charging area. We have a bunch of different drive modes here. So this is in uh, four wheel drive all the time, um, but you can put it in four wheel low. So it has a two speed transfer case. This also has air suspension, which will raise and lower, which is cool. You got your hill descent control and then decent storage space here with the center console. And let's see, pretty normal glove box. Yeah. And then this one just has a regular mirror. Um, and then you guys saw earlier full panoramic sunroof. Now the Durango definitely has the most sporty looking seats, as you can see with all of the Alcantara there in the center. And then also with the steering wheel, paddle shifters in the back. This, just like the Grand Cherokee, has adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring. We got memory seats. However, you guys can see the gauge cluster, partially uh, digital, but then also partially analog. And then let's see what kind of camera system this one has. Just a backup camera, again. And then you guys can see we've got this like shortcut bar here at the bottom. Um, response time with it is pretty solid. I wonder if it's kind of slow because of the cold. Anyways, heated ventilated seats, heated steering wheel as well. And then we got a bunch of physical buttons down below. Heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. And then you guys can see, got wireless phone charging pad. And then look at the forged carbon. That's pretty cool with this package. And then with a center console, decent storage space. And then nice stitching there on top. I do like this particular, this is the heavy orange interior. I do like this particular package. Uh, and then just a regular sunroof, by the way. Uh, and then also a regular mirror as well. Now with the Explorer, you guys can see sporty seats just like the Durango. 
and then steering wheel also pretty sporty as well and then you guys can see with all of like your window controls the mirrors do power fold and they also have blind spot monitoring We've got stuff like adaptive cruise control steering assist. Now something to note, if you get the ST Explorer um, full digital gauge cluster, this one again is an ST line, so it's more of like a base model. And then in reverse, we do actually have a 360 camera system. So even though this is more of a baseline <laughs> 360 camera, whereas the Grand Cherokee and Durango did not. Uh, infotainment system is responsive. With the uh, ST, for example, you got like the big tablet infotainment screen that's like vertical. And then this one still has heated seats and heated steering wheel. You can get ventilated seats in the Explorer if you want as well. And they got like our transmission selector, drive mode select. We got a bunch of different drive modes for both on-road and off-road use. Hill descent control. Got some cup holder action there. And you got the center console with the wireless phone charging pad. And then let's actually see. Yeah, pretty normal glove box. Um, and then this one doesn't have a center, but you can get like a panoramic in the Explorer. Now let's quickly go over pricing. So all of these vehicles with their base packages and base powertrains start somewhere in the low $40,000 range, but there's some pretty big price swings depending on what powertrains you throw into the vehicles. So with these reverse, this actually has the lowest amount of a price swing if that makes sense so again starting in like low 40s for like a base traverse this one's a high country fully loaded it's fifty six thousand dollars you can't really get it more expensive than what this one is now with the grand cherokee you can get pretty dang expensive um middle of the line is going to be like sixty thousand dollars for a grand cherokee l and then if you're fully loaded summit reserve with all the options and you know a four by e or a five seven hemi you're looking at like eighty thousand dollars and then with the durango you're looking at, again, roughly $40,000 starting price. Uh, this one with the Hemi and the Hemi Orange package, stickers for about $62,000. So that's a pretty loaded up uh, Durango. If you go for the SRT or the Hellcat, you're looking at eighty dollars to $100,000. Now with the Explorer, this is uh, pretty similar to like the Traverse, I'd have to say, starting in the $40,000 range and then fully loaded. It's a little bit more expensive. If you get like an ST or a Platinum, you're looking at just over $60,000. Now, before we cap things off, I do want to mention I will be posting a driving comparison with all four of these as well. So if you want to see that, I recommend you subscribe so that as soon as I post that, you can see it. Anyways, I feel like the Traverse is definitely the value piece out of the bunch because fully loaded, it's the least expensive. And it seems like Chevy gives you a lot of options and doesn't like charge you a crazy amount for it. Now with the Grand Cherokee, I do feel like this is the nice vehicle out of the bunch but you pay a lot for that again this one is the most expensive and it still doesn't necessarily have all the options that the other ones have especially like look at the traverse it has a camera rear view mirror it's got the sunroofs it's got it's got all that stuff and it's quite a bit less expensive than this grand cherokee and they have very similar powertrains so again this one does definitely feel the nicest with the interior but you're paying a big premium for that nice feeling interior now with the durango this one's kind of a little bit of an oddball in a sense um it definitely does feel nice with some of the updates that dodge has added to it over the years um but it definitely does also feel kind of like the oldest and it is like this vehicle hasn't been redesigned in quite some time that being said it does look the sportiest the interior feels the sportiest and so if you want like a sport SUV the Durango definitely provides that and then finally with the Explorer this one's actually in a similar boat to the Durango Ford did the new Explorer back in the 2020 model year and I think they've done an amazing job with the Explorer um, that being said the thing that really like gets in the way for me personally with the Explorer is just that third row um, it was the least comfortable out of the bunch but aside from that I love the features you can get with the Explorer I feel like just like the Traverse very good value for how many features you get and you can also get really solid performance with the Explorer at not a crazy high price um, so really solid value player and i hate to say this but with the walk around comparison i don't really feel like you could go wrong let me know which one you would choose